Hi everyone and welcome to Whiskey Pilgrim and to March! Yes, we are in March now and in March, as I said before, we will be going to Campbellton on the Age of Partnership Part 2 with three reviews from Campbellton and we're starting out with this beauty, the Long Road 21 year old, so stay tuned people and I see you soon. Hi everyone and welcome back yeah, to Whiskey Pilgrim and to review on this this beauty. The Long Road 21 year old, yeah. Here you have it. People. Sorry for the lightning. I can't do so much about it. Either that is really dark. Let's see. I can actually get some better here. Yeah. That's what it is. This is a Long Road 21 year old. It is 46% ABV. It should be non-shunned, non chill filtered, no other color because Spring doesn't do that shit with their whiskey. It is a peated malt from Campbellton from the Springbank Distillery. And let's put this one like that. As you can see. Comes in a really nice box. Nothing too fancy, but still quite nice. And you can also bind it rum, bind rum. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so, um yeah. It is um, apparently a maturation of 40%, no, 40% uh, bourbon cask, bourbon cask barrels, and 60% uh, sherry cask. So yeah, as you know, it was was um, a limited release of 3,600 bottles. So yeah, I came across this one by an accident in a whisk shop in Denmark or in Copenhagen. I saw it. I was aiming for another bottle, which they did not have at that moment. So. Uh, instead of saving my money, I went for this one. It's, it's quite expensive, more expensive, I know, than what you would pay in the UK. But still, I knew this is something special. I usually do say, try before you buy, and uh, yeah, I'll come into that more later as well. So, I did a whole thing that I actually have tried this one before. A few times, try to, you know, take down some notes. I don't always do that, it happens. Sometimes, usually when I bought something that I think is a little bit more expensive, more expensive, costs a little bit more, I want to do a more in-depth review, even though you should always do that, but still. Uh, there was a lot of um, stress, I think, with this one. So most of the people that have bought this one are probably not going to open it. It will be a collector's item, mostly, but I don't give a shit. It needs to be open, people, if you choose to do that. So... This is the color, and it looks like apple juice. Maybe I have just been faking this whole thing, just fill up with apple juice, I found. And empty the bottle, and fill up with apple juice, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, uh, on the nose, the nose. Mm -mm -mm. The first thing that really hits me on this one is this candy we have here in Sweden. It's this um, skull kind of, um, yeah, showing... Um, uh, candy we have here. I don't have it here. Um, and uh, it really reminds me of this one. Because it's flavored with um, raspberry and licorice. And that's what I'm really getting here. Mm, that's really good. So if you don't like licorice, you're going to find out there's quite a lot of licorice in here. Um, I could also get the whole, the whole uh, something that I have to explain to you. Because this is something that comes from where I live. Um, it reminds me a lot like a dark syrupy bread thing we have here. Um, called uh, covering. It's a bread thing we have here. And usually with the covering you can do uh, an apple pie. It's called a skonsk apple pie. Or a skonsk apple, apple pie. Apple cake. Uh, which is skone, which is the state that I come from. Or a lan, as we say. Basically. So there's uh, this uh, apple pie thing that we have here traditionally. It really reminds me of the dough or just the, the pie crust, basically. There's also definitely tropical fruit notes. Mm, there's this salt again, it could be because of the licorice, but also a little bit seaweed, kind of. And uh, something else you do get a lot from this one is rhubarb, rhubarb, I think it's called. Rhubarb. Raisins soaked in sherry as well. Mm -mm -mm. And some creamy vanilla ice cream. So, that was the nose. The nose. Let's get into the palette now, people. 
see what we can find. Smell a little bit more. <laughs> it's oh. yeah, definitely a raspberry again, licorice flavor candy, a malty biscuity um, vanilla flavor, bis malty biscuit cracker or something, with a lot of butter, melted butter, as well. <clears throat> I will say it again, a multi biscuity crack, not crackhead, but <laughs> but um, like cracker, like a biscuit kind of cookie dough thing with a lot of melted butter. Um, very nutty, fudge, oily or fatty, fat because of the butter, maybe. Uh, also, I would say, and let's thank it to Antonio from um, Whiskey Quest who helped me out with this. Um, flavor or um, nose thing that I once had problem with sawdust or damp warehouse but he helped me out with the sawdust thing uh, so thank you Antonio I will not put that into my cat or into my yeah, you know, catalog of uh, flavors and smells so thank you very much uh, also there's a um, dark chocolate a little bit in the background and of course when you talk about peat because I forgot to mention the nose also with the peat here Usually a uh, long grow can be quite peaty. I do think because of the age, 21 years, it has slowly, 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 slowly <laughs> faded, you know? Yeah, because I think that's what happens with peat when it lays too long in, um, or being aged for a long time, it starts fading. So I guess why long, or not long growth, but octomores are usually five years, five, ten, five to ten years, I think, because of the ppm high levels they have so that was that um, I will also do this And we have the finish, usually I don't talk about finish, but here I can really feel a really good finish. There is um, cough drops or these um, tablets you suck on, basically with a lot of peppermint, um, lemon and honey as well. Uh, once again with the whole wood thing, oaky, kind of like fresh cut wood I would say, or damp warehouse or sawdust. Um, in the background also very dry raisiny sherry notes as well. It's really nice, really, really nice. And also there's some like leather or tobacco, I'm not really sure yet. It's really nice. Hmm. Hmm. I will be very honest about this bottle. Is it worth the money? I paid, I think, 280 euros for this one. So I might have overpriced, you know, for a 21 euro bottle, 280 euros. It's like paying for Macallan, isn't it? Or Lega <laughs> Yeah, or the other ones. Very expensive, each stated whiskies. High age, high age stated whiskies. But it's really good. I highly recommend anyone see this in the bar to try this one. It needs time to open up. I had this in the glass for like at least 20 minutes. You know, one minute per year. Uh, it is really good, in my view. Uh, first time I opened this one. It was just the neck, what you call the neck pour. I wasn't really that intrigued. I was like, Jesus Christ, have I just wasted all that money? Now I can actually feel that this is getting better and better, actually. And I actually do think when I'm down here, maybe, here somewhere, it's gonna be really good. Or it had just oxidated because of the cork, maybe, who knows? <laughs> Hopefully not. But yeah, this is a really good whiskey. I highly recommend you try it if you can find it. Always try it before you buy, seriously. But it is a really good whiskey. So, so far this year has done really well. And this is one of those whiskey could maybe be my whiskey of the year 2020, or in the list at least. This one has definitely made a list of my best whiskeys of the year 2020 so far. But that might change. So who knows? So stay tuned on Whiskey Pilgrim, and I will see you on the next review. 
there will be Springbank again or Campbellton maybe. Yeah, Campbellton of course. So take care everyone. Bye.